Need a family SUV with seven seats? Bored by what's on offer? Say at Hopes, you'll like its offering, the Turaco. You get Volkswagen Group engineering, sharp styling, plenty of interior space, and the Iberian maker hopes a dash of Spanish flair, which this car will need to stand out in its segment. Just how important is it for a mid-range, D-segment, seven-seat family SUV to be sporty? Well, not very, according to the key protagonist in this segment. Sayat disagrees and is positioning this car, the Taraco, as a slightly more responsive choice for folk who want to feel that they're driving more than just a crossover-cultured bus after they've dropped the kids off at school. Of course, the Spanish maker needed something to set this contender a little apart from the mechanically almost identical Volkswagen Group models that share its MQB-A platform, the Skoda Kodiak and the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. It wasn't so very long ago that Seat didn't have a single SUV in its lineup. Now, this Taraco sits at the head of the company's crossover triumvirate that already includes the little Ibiza-based Arona and the slightly larger Leon-structured Attica. The Taraco is the biggest car that the brand has yet made, and it will only be offered in our market with seven seats. Previously, if you'd thought about the idea of seven seats and a Seat at all, you'd have thought immediately of the company's long-selling Alhambra MPV people carrier. But the market long ago moved on into SUVs, a segment that these days accounts for over a quarter of the industry's output, with sales in this sector set to grow by a further 25% in the next five years. Hence the way that most of SAT's recent 3.3 billion euro product development investment has been targeted at crossover customers. Wondering about the name? Well, you probably weren't, but uh, it scratched its head long and hard about it, eventually putting the question out to a social media vote. Over 146,000 people responded with the Taraco badge chosen, referencing the ancient name for the young, vibrant city of Tarragona which fits with the great play that Seat makes about this car's Spanishness. Now, actually, it's built in Wolfsburg alongside the Skoda and Volkswagen models that show its platform. So there's a little Latin spirit combined with a dash of Teutonic sense and sensibility. And that is a combination that has served Seat well in the past. How does it work here? Well, let's find out. When it comes to drive dynamics, you can't help expecting a bit more from a Seat. Yes, even if it is an SUV. This is, after all, the company that, with its mid-sized Attica, showed us that a crossover could be a relatively engaging thing to drive. Uh, to repeat that result with a much larger, heavier SUV like this, Taraco was asking a lot, particularly as, in this case, the Barcelona brand was allowed much less engineering freedom in creating a distinctive end result. Still, Seat's tried a little here, insisting that a Taraco should should be set up fractionally firmer and ride 20 millimeters lower than its Skoda Kodiak and Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace production stablemates. As a result, it feels slightly more agile through the bends than a large, high-set family car like this normally would, and it occasionally gets a little more upset over poorer surfaces than an SUV of this kind might usually do. It's all a bit predictable, really, and neither issue is likely to be a game-changer towards wanting or discarding this contender from your wish list. We can't help thinking that a buyer of a seven-seat family crossover is more likely to prioritize the kind of greater ride comfort that you'd find in that rival Volkswagen model, a car that, unlike this one, can be ordered with adaptive damping at extra cost. But then again, it's certainly nice when you're pressing on in a vehicle of this size, a late in the school run, and you find that the car you're in seems to shrink around you and doesn't feel quite such a bust through the turns. That's pretty much the kind of experience you get in this Seat. Uh, although we'd stop short of calling it enjoyable to drive, uh, there's no particular fun to be had in throwing this Taraco about. Still, its composure when you do, or perhaps when you have to, is quite impressive, helped immeasurably by several things. Firstly, by the fact that the designers have kept vehicle weight within manageable bounds. Uh, this car's around 70 kilos lighter than, say, a uh, rival Land Rover Discovery Sport. Also playing its part is the well-weighted progressive steel 
steering, which reduces the effort that's needed for low speed manoeuvring, but which alters its ratio at higher speeds so it feels more direct through the corners. And when you push on through those turns, uh, you should feel the effect of the XDS electronic differential lock system that breaks the inside wheels when cornering to help tighten your line around the bend. You'll want to know about engines. Almost all sales will be of one of the two 150 PS units, both of which deliver very similar standard performance stats. 62 from rest in just under 10 seconds on the way to around 125 miles an hour. The first of these is the VW Group's uh, usual 1.5 litre TSI Evo petrol power plant, which will probably be ideal if you're a low mileage owner and you have no interest in towing. Unlike Skoda, say it doesn't give you the option of this engine with all wheel traction and you can't have it an auto gearbox either, which is why we'd expect slightly more of the Taraco sold in our market to feature the 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel that we're trying today. We've got it here in front driven manual form, but you can also order it in a package that combines DSG automatic transmission with say it's 4 drive 4x4 system. With those two things fitted, this car's maximum permissible brake towing weight figure rises from the 1.8 tonne figure you get with the 1.5 litre petrol model to a far more usable 2.5 tonnes. All of this is helped by the fact that the base diesel engine's 340 newton metre torque output means pulling power is 40% greater than that of the equivalent petrol variant. Should you also pause to consider one of the two minority interest, more powerful engine options on offer? Well, most Taraco buyers probably won't, uh, partly because those variants can only be had with a plusher trim levels and the four drive DSG automatic package, so pricing is quite high. There's a gutsier 190 PS version of the 2 litre diesel, or if you prefer, a 2 litre TSI petrol power plant, also putting out 190 PS. Either way, you'll get to 62 from rest in 8 seconds flat, en route to a top speed of about 130 miles an hour. But again, the diesel, of course, will give you a lot more pulling power through the gears. Uh, if you want to go faster, you can talk to your dealer about a more performance orientated FR Sport model that uses a twin turbo by TDI version of the diesel that develops a 240 PS. Whatever engine you choose, Sat hopes that this car's drive profile driving mode system will allow you to make the most of it. Three settings, normal, sport and eco, are available to you via this rotary controller near the gear stick and each alters throttle, uh, steering and rather less usefully the cabin state of climate control. Uh, there's also an individual setting that we anticipate 99% of Taraco owners will never use, which allows you to more specifically set up the particular parameters yourself. Go for the sport option and it won't be accompanied by the really focused single dial layout for the digital cockpit instrument cluster that you would find with the layout in the Cupra Attica, but you can bring up a trio of sport dials on the screen at the top of the center stack, which can be configured to show kilowatt power, uh, oil temperature, turbo boost or g-force readings. Now, if you do happen to have chosen one of the four drive, four wheel drive models we mentioned earlier, the rotary drive profile controller will also give you extra off road and snow modes. Select one of those, and almost everything about the car will instantly be optimized for off piste use uh, throttle response, steering feel, stability control thresholds, and also gear shift timings for the mandatory DSG automatic transmission. Plus, a useful hill descent system is activated to ease you down slippery slopes, while dynamic cornering lights open up a brighter and wider light pattern to help you uh, better spot potential obstacles. You might also want to use the off-road information screen that you can select to show on the centre monitor, which provides two configurable dials that you can set to display from your choice of uh, outside temperature, oil temperature, compass readings and current steering angle. So this car is prepared for the rough stuff, but can it actually cope when you get to it? Well, better than you'd think, given that this Seat has a car-like monocoque chassis, road-orientated tyres, and very little in the way of axle articulation. Plus, there's obviously no low-range gearbox and no way of manually locking the differential for the really sticky stuff. On light, loose surfaces like gravel or soft sand, it actually scrabbles its way over awkward terrain rather effectively. Uh, you would struggle on anything much gnarlier than that, though, and that's thanks first and foremost to that 20 millimeter ride height reduction we mentioned earlier. Uh, keep your off-piste adventuring to light forest tracks and muddy car parks though and you'll be absolutely fine. 
That's all that most owners will want, and in any case, most of them choosing the four-drive option will have done so for the extra traction that it's likely to deliver on tarmac rather than off it. With this latest version of four-drive, that capability has been optimised thanks to a faster apportioning of power to all four wheels via a process that provides pre-activation of the rear clutch and improved operation of the electronic differentials. It'll all make you feel pretty confident throughout the next snowy snap. In fact, even without four wheel drive, you might well feel pretty confident in slippery conditions in a Turaco, um, provided you fitted a decent set of winter tyres, of course. This car feels stable and tractable, plus it cruises quietly and, as we suggested earlier, it resists body lane effectively, allowing it to be guided easily along a fast, flowing road. You will need to bear in mind that ride quality caveat we mentioned earlier, uh, the plusher, larger wheeled variants exacerbate it, but otherwise there's much to like here, just not too much to love. When given a free hand, Seat styling director Alejandro Mezanero Romanos and his team are capable of some striking shapes. The Turaco, though, had to closely follow the design template already established by the other Volkswagen Group SUV D-segment models that it shares its Wolfsburg factory with, the Skoda Kodiak and the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. And that left very little room for splashes of Iberian expression. Still, the chiselled lines are smart and in some places quite sleek. And we're told that there are elements here that give a hint as to say its future design direction. These are mainly here at the front where this quite imposing hexagonal grille is garnished with a broad chrome frame and flanked by full LED headlamps featuring the company's triangular lighting signature. Uh, large corner cutouts feature below for the front fog lamps and plusher models get the lower silver trim embellishment that this more affordable variant lacks. And from the side, well, there are obviously larger seven-seat SUVs on the market, but if you're a typical family buyer, it's possible that you wouldn't really want anything much bigger than this. Uh, the Turaco stands 1.67 metres tall, and it's 4.73 metres long. That makes it 34 mils longer than a Tiguan Allspace and 38 mils longer than a Kodiak. It's also bigger than most models from rival brands, 94 mils longer than a Peugeot 5008 and a massive 136 mils longer than a Land Rover Discovery Sport. In this segment, only the pricier Kia Sorento and Hyundai Santa Fe are bigger. Predictably, uh, the black plastic clad arches can house big wheels to go with the substantial stance. The rim sizes start at 17 inches. We've got the 18 inches here. And for the first time on a set, you can have alloys as big as 20 inches in size if you really want to make a pavement statement. Uh, key profile perspective touches include standard roof rails and this deep crease which runs from the front wheel arch through the door handles to the rear flanks which are embellished by a distinctive kicked back D-pillar window line. Uh, if you're cross shopping against the rival Skoda Kodiak, you might also notice that this uh, Seat has a sportier ride height. It's 20 millimetres lower. At the rear, there are LED tail lamps, and as is now fashionable, there's a lighting strip which stretches right across the tailgate. Although, a little disappointingly, the centre part of this is merely decorative, and that robs this design of the chance of a really distinctive nighttime signature. Uh, further down, you get these slim reflectors in a lower bumper trimming section that's designed to completely hide the exhaust, while up above, there's a neat rooftop spoiler. More important, though, of course, as usual, is the stuff you can't see, specifically the stiff, uh, sophisticated MQBA platform underpinnings that lie beneath the precise, carefully contoured lines. OK, time to try the cabin. Is it really possible to make a family SUV of this size feel engaging and faintly sporty behind the wheel? Well, that's what Seat's set out to do here. And with some success too, that you certainly don't feel that you're captaining a particularly large piece of automotive real estate here, is down to some clever design work. Uh, the intelligent use of shapes and lines on the bonnet, 
and a careful placement of seat height that gives you a slightly more commanding feel than you'd normally get in a family car uh, without the need to position you high enough to look over the hedgerows. Uh, now we've chosen a fairly mainstream spec level to test here with textile trimming that doesn't feel particularly plush, although silvered inlay strips on the dash and on the doors try to lift the atmosphere. Still it all looks pretty hard wearing and if you are able to stretch to a ritzier version then you'll find the cabin embellished with materials like Alcantara and black leather. A nice little touch across the range is the way that this engine start stop button pulses red like a heartbeat. Other than that, your first impressions are going to centre around the screens. Now, only a year or two back in a car of this sort, a digital dash and a TFT centre infotainment display this large would have been either a pipe dream or a ridiculously expensive option. So it's taken advantage of its late appearance in this segment to standardise these features, and here both are standard fit right across the range. Uh, probably most noteworthy is this 10.2-inch digital cockpit screen, which is there to replace the usual dials and gauges in the instrument binnacle. It's based on Audi's virtual cockpit technology and it offers lots of configurable options, starting with the choices offered by this steering wheel view button. Now this enables you to choose between three layouts, twin virtual dials with a central information section, or the option to have that central information full screen with or without flanking vertical rev counter and speedo readouts. Uh, you change what appears in the middle of the layout by using the these steering wheel scrolling buttons, there's driving data, there's information on the various assist systems, or you can show the current status of navigation, audio or phone settings. And that's just the start of the configuration possibilities here. Where dials appear in the instrument layout, be they circular or squarical, you can customise what appears within them using an instrument cluster option offered up by the view section of this 8-inch centre dash screen. Uh, depending on how you choose to set up the display, you can get the gauges showing range, distance info, a compass, altitude, audio, consumption, driving distance, travelling time or route guidance info. It's really neat. And if you want to be really well briefed at the wheel of your Taraco, uh, you can also set up this center 8 inch screen to display a trio of sport dials, which you can configure to show kilowatt power, oil temperature, turbo boost, or g force readings. Or this central monitor can show an off road information screen in which mode the uh, two virtual dials can display from your choice of outside temperature, oil temperature, compass readings, and current steering angle. Now, if you view all of this as information overload, you'll want to limit yourself to this central screen's more conventional features. Now, unfortunately, there's no lower infotainment controller such as you'd get on, say, a Mazda CX-5 or a premium SUV in this segment. So you have to either stab away at the touchscreen or master the vagaries of voice control but you can't fault the functionality here. And this classy monitor delivers all the usual informational, telephone and entertainment options with assured cleverness. Uh, avoid entry level trim and there's navigation too. In addition, thanks to the incorporated full link connectivity, you can connect in your smartphone via the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto systems. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, there's voice control and a proximity sensor that detects when your hand's close to the screen surface. Uh, text, Twitter and Facebook messages can be read out to you as you drive and the software will let you dictate a reply if you really are desperate to comment on a post. Uh, this screen can also deal with climate functions if you don't want to use the buttons and rotary dial provided for that purpose further down the centre stack. Ergonomics have been as well thought through as the infotainment technology. Uh, the floating style placement of this centre screen uh, might make it look like a bit of an afterthought, but it's positioned that way to make it easier to see and to make it more convenient to reach. Uh, this seat's supportive too, and we approve of the fact that lumbar adjustment is standard fit. Uh, you'll find it easy to adjust the seat and the steering wheel to the perfect driving position, and your view forward is largely unimpeded. That's not the case with over the shoulder vision though, thanks to those bulky rear pillars. So it's just as well that rear parking sensors are included as part of the range. As you'd expect from a German built car, build quality is largely faultless, and lower quality plastics have mostly been relegated to areas that you'll rarely touch. As for cabin storage, well, you'd expect plenty of that in a family SUV, and you shouldn't be disappointed here. Uh, the deep 
flock line door bins will easily hold a large bottle of water. Uh, so it hasn't forgotten to include an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Uh, there's a useful little stowage net in the front passenger footwell, plus a compartment down by the driver's right knee. You get a ticket clip in the driver's sun visor here, and the glove box has been air conditioned to keep chocolate and drinks cool. Although you might struggle to fit those in since uh, space in it is uh, mostly taken up by media equipment and the vehicle handbook. Uh, this little stowage area behind the drive system controller incorporates a couple of really neat cup holders too, which adjust to the uh, required shape of the bottle or can you insert. Uh, you're obviously supposed to put your phone in this open recess in front of the gear stick, hence the provided twin USB points plus a 12 volt port and an aux in socket. We'd prefer to charge our handsets away from prying eyes in this lidded box further back between the seats, which has a neat adjustable top that serves as a comfortable elbow rest. Unfortunately, though, um, this receptacle doesn't provide any interior connectivity points for that purpose. Enough on what it's like in the front of this Taraco. Let's check out the rear, and that's accessed through these wide opening doors. Uh, this second row bench features all the versatility you'd want from this kind of seven-seat SUV. So the backrest reclines for greater comfort on longer journeys, and the 60-40 split seat base slides back and forth too. Even with it fully back, though, legroom isn't particularly generous, but a couple of lanky occupants would still probably be reasonably satisfied, although you don't get as much elbow room as you would in slightly wider class contenders like Kia Sorento and Hyundai Santa Fe. Uh, that means that those rivals will be a touch more accommodating should it be necessary to take three adults back here. In a Taraco, uh, things aren't helped in this regard by this raised centre transmission tunnel, although it's not as prominent as some we have seen in this class. Uh, overall, a trio of grown-up folk could just about be accommodated without too many spatial compromises. That'll be helped by the way that the uh, boxy bodywork delivers plenty of headroom. So it has worked hard on family usability back here, although in some respects, you do have to wonder whether the company's designers actually have regular families. Some of our testers thought that the flimsiness of this seat back tray table would see it last about five minutes with the average five-year-old pounding away on it, or ramming his or her bottle of drink into this pop-out side cup holder that would see it uh, yanked off in even less time. More cup holders will feature if you're able to use this center armrest. Really young ones are properly catered for by the uh, fact that Isofix child seat fastenings feature for the two outer second row seated occupants, and older offspring will be pleased to find that SAT's provided a USB port and a 12 volt socket. Uh, there are decently sized door bins and seat back pockets too, and impressively, three zone climate control is standard across the range, hence these buttons just below the central twin air vents for the separate rear passenger zone. A panoramic glass roof is optional, and if you specify that, it won't decimate headroom in the same way that that feature does with some rivals. So, uh, what's it going to be like in the third row? Well, gaining access to the very rear of the car could be easier. You have to pull up this latch on the second row seat shoulder, which slides the seat base forward. And uh, now you can do that on either side of the car. This ought to be a one-handed pull and push forward operation, but unfortunately, the, the latch is so stiff that two hands are actually needed to get the job done. Uh, once the seat has moved, there's just enough of a gap for kids or moderately athletic adults to to jump into the very back. Now back here you're quickly reminded that this is an SUV, not an MPV. If you regularly carried seven passengers and you'd swapped into one of these after owning a Seat Alhambra people carrier, you certainly wouldn't be happy and it's immediately obvious why. As an adult in the rearmost part of this Taraco, unless you've got extremely accommodating middle row passengers who have uh, slid their seats right forward, you really will find your legroom pretty restricted. Nor have the designers of this car compensated by copying rivals who have created third row seating that's slightly raised so occupants can have a better view of the road ahead. Now Sayat points out that these pews are only redesigned for kids and we would agree before asking why if that's the case the designers haven't fitted these chairs out with the ice fixed child seat fastenings that parents will need. Now to be fair to the Spanish brand most rival brand models make the same mistake. 
Overall though, the space back here isn't really any more restricted than it would be in any other mid-sized SUV of this kind. And uncomplaining adults joining you for short journeys will probably be quite glad of it. A shallow storage area is provided on the right, while the left-hand occupant is favoured with a stowage tray and a cup holder. So that extra body length that this Taraco enjoys over its Volkswagen and Skoda design stablemates hasn't freed up any extra third row passenger space, but does it give you any more luggage room? Well, let's see. The answer, if you're interested, is no. Now we've got a manual tailgate here. Top excellent spec models have a powered hatch that can also raise with a swipe of your foot beneath a bumper. Anyway, once it is raised, if all three seating rows are in use, you'll have 230 litres of luggage space. That's the same as a Tiguan Allspace, but it's 40 litres less than a shorter Skoda Kodiak could offer in the same configuration. Uh, the bottom line is that there's around about the same amount of room here as you'd get in the boot of a Super Mini. And Sayat would want us to point out that a rival Land Rover Discovery Sport, well, that offers just 194 litres of cargo space. So in other words, it could be worse. This fabricated floor panel hides an area that can be used to swallow the tonneau cover when that's not in use, with deep recessed corner compartments on either side, and space for a few smaller items in the lower area, which will be used to store a space over spare wheel if you're wise enough to pay extra for one of those. Uh, there is a pull-out bag hook and a 12-volt socket on the left. Most of the time, of course, Taraco owners are probably going to be using their cars with these rearmost seats folded into the floor. That's an action that's uh, simple and easy to complete. In which case, if you load to the roof line, there's potentially 700 litres of space on offer with the middle row pushed right forward. That's 20 litres less than a Kodiak. Uh, you will obviously considerably reduce that total figure if you uh, pull that second row bench back to a more sensible position, which doesn't cut off adult middle row passengers at the knees. Uh, with it pushed right forward, uh, you'd find that eight cabin-sized suitcases would fit. Uh, to give you a bit of perspective on that, uh, let's tell you that a rival Peugeot 5008 would swallow 10 in the same configuration. If you need to accommodate longer items, the 40-20-40 split folding functionality of the secondary seatbacks will be welcome. It allows you to push through longer items like skis without disturbing a couple of rear seated passengers. Uh, if you do need more room and you have to flatten the second row backrest completely, uh, then you can do that using these useful cargo sidewall catches. Now, unlike, unlike its rival Skoda, Seat isn't mean enough to charge you extra for these. It is a pity, though, that they feel so stiff and flimsy. The catches feel like they're about to snap off in your hand before they finally retract the middle seat back. Now, once you've done that and used up all the easy fold seating systems, various retractable options, you'll get yourself a completely flat, if rather high set loading area. Although there is quite a gap between the folded second and third rows into which small items will inevitably disappear. Uh, in this configuration, 1,775 litres of space is freed up and various tie down rings are provided to help secure your loads. Uh, that capacity is quite a lot less than the 2,005 litre total you'd get in the rival Skoda Kodiak nor can you extend it because, unlike Skoda, Seat doesn't offer buyers the option of the kind of fold-flat passenger seat that would enable you to transport longer items like ladders and surfboards inside the cabin. Still, what's provided in this configuration is 78 litres more than you get in a Discovery Sport, and it'll probably be sufficient for the needs of most likely owners. As you'd expect, the Taraco range is priced very similarly to most of its key D-segment seven-seat SUV rivals. In this case, that means a span which from launch began at around £28,500 and ranged up to around £38,000. Uh, Sayet's only offering this car in our market with seven seats and thinks that most customers will want this model in front-driven manual transmission form with one of its 150 PS engines, either the base 1.5-litre TSI Evo petrol unit or for just under 1500 pounds more the two litre tdi diesel we're trying here go for the diesel you'll be offered the opportunity to add in dsg automatic transmission and say it's four drive four by four system and that's a package that'll add around 3200 pounds to the asking price and i'd take the cost of a base diesel model from around 30,000 to around 33,000 pounds 
From launch, there were four available core trim levels in the lineup. SE, SE Technology, that's what we've got here. Uh, Excellence and Top Excellence Lux. If you can stretch beyond the two base SE levels and you have a budget of at least £35,000, then you'll have the opportunity to choose one of the two more powerful minority interest 190 PS engines, both of which have to be had with that DSG Auto 4Drive package. Choose from either an uprated 2-litre TDI diesel or a 2-litre TSI petrol unit. You can also ask your dealer about a top FR Sport performance model with a 240 PS 2-litre by TDI diesel. Enough with Taraco product semantics. How does its pricing compare with that of obvious rivals? Well, let's see. Uh, we ought to start by saying that this car theoretically could interest a wide range of family buyers. After all, if your family needs seven seats, then the kind of money being asked here could get you three seating rows with a lot more space in the form of a large segment seven-seat MPV people carrier. Uh, Ford Galaxy, uh, Volkswagen Chiran, or say its own Alhambra, for example, which in equivalent form costs around about the same as a Taraco. Uh, the primary target market here, though, is that for SUVs. So it's against equivalent mid-sized seven-seat models in that market sector that we'll be making our key comparisons. We'll start with the two most obvious rivals, the cars that share this one's MQBA platform and all its engineering. Skoda's Kodiak, which costs a little less, and Volkswagen's Tiguan Allspace, which costs a little more. Now, at first glance, you might think that the Skoda costs a lot less, but that's because, unlike this Seat, uh, the Kodiak is available in five-seat form. Actually, though, when you match like with like, which isn't all that easy because the Kodiak can't be had in front-driven form with the 2-litre TDI 150 PS diesel engine and a manual gearbox, uh, you'll find that the Skoda will only save you around £1,500, which your Seat dealer will explain away by pointing out that a Taraco is better equipped with features like the digital cockpit dash and three-zone climate control. In fact, in many ways, this Seat is better equipped than a comparable Volkswagen Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace 2, which on a model-for-model model basis will cost you around £2,500 more, which is a lot extra to pay for a different bonnet badge. Enough with that. Uh, what are your alternatives in the segment outside of Volkswagen Group models? Well, let's start with the obvious ones. Nissan's X-Trail, that's a strong seller, but that is another car in the class that initially looks cheaper because third row seating costs extra and because it can be ordered with the kind of poverty spec trim levels that say it doesn't bother with here. Uh, go for an X-Trail with seven seats along with reasonably comparable Accenta premium mid-range trim and that Nissan would probably save you no more than a few hundred pounds over a Taraco, which does doesn't seem much extra to pay for what, in the case of this Seat, feels a slightly higher quality product. Uh, we'd be more inclined to consider Peugeot's appealing 5008, which could work well if you wanted an alternative to the base 1.5-litre TSI petrol Taranco. The 1.2-litre pure tech engine 5008 costs slightly less and is more economical to run. Go beyond that power plant in the Peugeot range, though, and you might struggle to justify that 5008 against this Seat. After all, a 5008 can't be had with four-wheel drive, and if you want it with a diesel engine, you've either got to have have a 1.5 litre Blue HDI 130 unit, which doesn't give you the performance you get in a 150 PS Taraco, or have your 5008 with a costly 2 litre Blue HDI 180 unit, which doesn't even start price wise until about £35,000. So you might be starting to see how the value proposition of this set could really add up for you. What about the Korean contingent in this sector, though, the Kia Sorento and the Hyundai Santa Fe? Well, both only come with a 2.2-litre CRDI 200 PS diesel unit, which will cost you considerably more to run than this Taraco's 2-litre TDI power plant. If that doesn't bother you, the Sorento looks quite appealing in the way that it can offer you four-wheel drive and that gutsy CRDI unit for the cost of a base front-driven 150 PS diesel Taraco. But if you want auto transmission, the Kia will cost you more than the comparable version of this Seat, and it's a much older design. Uh, the Santa Fe, well, that's newer, but a front-driven diesel model costs around £3,000 more than a comparable Taraco. while for a four-wheel drive Santa Fe, uh, you're looking at upwards of £40,000. You've really got to want the Hyundai to pay that. 
Your other segment options are quickly covered. Now, if you're wondering why we haven't yet mentioned the Land Rover Discovery Sport, it's because A, that car can't be had with an affordable entry-level petrol engine, and B, because at the time of this test, it wasn't possible to buy a seven-seat version of a diesel Discovery Sport for less than around £36,500. That's the sort of figure that would take a typical Taraco family buyer way over budget. That's because you have to have all-wheel drive and auto transmission if you want three seating rows in that Land Rover. And no, we don't know why that is either. Uh, the other cars in the class, well, there's Mitsubishi's aging Outlander, the conventional petrol version of which costs about the same as a base petrol Turaco, but which is smaller inside, it's cruder to drive, and it costs much more to run. Uh, then there's Sangyong's Rexton, uh, which is only offered here in 2.2 litre, 184 PS diesel four-wheel drive form. But again, we can't really see why you'd want that unless you particularly needed that Sangyong's greater off-road and towing ability. It won't save you that much over a diesel Turaco. It'll be cruder to drive, it'll depreciate greatly, and it'll cost much more to run. Having considered all this, you might understandably conclude that this SEAT is what you want. And if so, uh, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Barcelona brand has been when it comes to standard equipment. So let's take a look at that now. Now we'll start with the core stuff that you get on all models. Obviously, the seven seat layout we mentioned earlier, and that's made flexible by the brand's easy fold rear system, which retracts all the rear chairs neatly into the floor. As for driver's stuff, well, all variants get progressive steering, which reduces the effort needed for low speed manoeuvring, but alters its ratio at higher speeds so it feels more direct through the corners. Plus there's a Seat Drive Profile driving mode system with four modes, normal, sport, eco and individual, that alter steering feel, throttle response and climate settings. Other key things you'll find fitted as standard across the range include full LED headlights, LED tail lamps, front fog lights with a cornering function, black roof rails, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, rear parking sensors, an alarm and power folding mirrors. Refreshingly, you don't have to pay any extra for metallic paint either. Inside, every Taraco model gives you three-zone climate control with separate settings for rear seat passengers, plus niceties like leather for the steering wheel and the gear knob, an auto-dimming rearview mirror, driver's seat lumbar support and cruise control. Media provision is a strong set selling point too. All Taracos feature the 10.2-inch digital cockpit configurable instrument binnacle screen and the brand's 8-inch center dash media system display. The media system controls an 8-speaker DAB audio setup and it also includes Bluetooth phone connectivity, uh, an SD card reader, an aux in point and three USB connections. Additionally, you also get the brand's useful full link pack which allows you to link in your smartphone via the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and MirrorLink systems. OK, so those are the core features. Now let's drill down into the individual spec levels to see what you get so you can decide exactly how far up the trim hierarchy you might want to venture. Uh, things kick off with base SE trim. That's the only variant that uses 17-inch wheels. But we've chosen the next spec up for our test, SE Technology. This is distinguished from the base model by larger 18-inch wheels and dark-tinted rear windows. Plus, inside its media system, it gets navigation added into it. It's a good starting point for your your perusal of the range. If you can afford to go further, then excellence is the next step up. Here you get a classy look, courtesy of 19-inch exclusive machined alloy wheels, body-coloured bumpers, chromed roof rails and chromed side window surrounds. There's keyless entry, adaptive cruise control and a powered tailgate with a virtual pedal feature that allows you to activate the hatch with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper. Inside, you step across an illuminated door sill and you sit on sport seats trimmed in soft Alcantara. Plus, parking is made easy easier by a rear view camera and a park assist system which automatically steers you into spaces. Now finally, if you want the most indulgent mainstream Turaco model available, a top excellence Lux trim builds on that with 20 inch supreme machined alloy wheels, leather upholstery, a powered operated driver's seat with a memory function, a top view surround view camera system and heat for the front seats, the outer rear chairs and the washer nozzles.
Uh, on to options, and this won't take us too long because there aren't too many. Uh, the main thing that your dealer will press on you is the panoramic sunroof, which includes surrounding LED lighting, although if you specify that, you lose a roof light and the sunglasses overhead storage compartment. Uh, we think you ought to add in the optional space over spare wheel too, if the next time you have a puncture, you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road fiddling around with the tyre repair kit. Quite a few potential owners will also want to consider a few practicalities, a tow bar, exterior protective mouldings, and the front and rear roof crossbars that will enable you to fit a roof box, for example. For the boot area, there's a rear bumper protective moulding to protect this area from scrapes and scratches. And you can also add in an upper boot tray, which clips in behind the second row seat back so that when you're not using the third row chairs, you have somewhere to store smaller items. Now, as we said, metallic paint is standard, but there are only seven colour choices. And surprisingly, from what's supposed to be a vibrant Spanish brand, there are no bright choices amongst them. Apart from Oryx White and Reflex Silver, they're all dark, somber hues. This particular car's indium grey finish, for example. On to safety, and it's an area where SAT can draw on the considerable resources of the Volkswagen Group, especially when it comes to camera-driven tech. And this car is hardly overloaded with it by modern standards, but across the range, you do get a front assist system that on the open road scans the road ahead, searching for potential accident hazards as you drive, using a distance warning feature to alert you if one's detected and automatically braking if necessary. Now, you get the same kind of functionality at urban speeds too, as part of a city emergency braking system, which is included as part of that front assist package. Now, this setup also includes predictive pedestrian protection, which uh, specifically searches for pedestrians and cyclists who might be about to veer out in front of you and, if necessary, can initiate braking to avoid them. Now, we additionally applaud the standard fitment of a lane assist system, which will automatically steer you back into lane if you drift out of it. This not only helps with long highway trips, but it also minimises the risk posed by dangerous oncoming traffic on country roads. I mean, just how many lives could a system like that have saved if it had been more widely available before now? Another standard safety orientated feature we like is the driver alert tiredness recognition system, which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness and prompts you to stop for a restorative coffee if it detects lethargy. Uh, Taraco buyers also get an e-call feature, which automatically notifies the emergency services of your exact GPS location if the airbags go off in an accident. Uh, Say so it also offered some extra camera driven features, blind spot assist, which alerts you if there's a vehicle in your blind spot, traffic sign assist, pre-crash assist, which prepares the car for an impending impact, and rollover assist. All these features were included on limited run launch edition versions of this car, but at the time of this test, they weren't available to buyers of core models in the standard range. Still, all the basics are well covered off, which means all variants get anti-whiplash head restraints, uh, twin front side and curtain airbags, plus the driver's knee bag that some rivals forget to include. Uh, there are Isofix child seat fastenings too, but only for the front passenger seat and the two outer occupants of the second row, not for the rearmost chairs. On top of this, there are the usual electronic systems now well familiar on this class of car. That means ESC stability control, an ARSR traction control system, and an XDS electronic differential lock system, which maximizes cornering traction. There's ABS braking, of course, and panic stops will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. Hill hold assist will stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and there's also an active bonnet, the rear edge of which rises instantly to minimise head injuries in the nightmare scenario of an impact with a pedestrian or a cyclist. It's all but enough to give this car a top five-star Euro NCAP testing result. That organisation awards this design an impressive 96% score for adult safety. It's accepted wisdom in SUV circles that a spacious D-segment, mid-sized seven-seat SUV like this one will cost you significantly more to run than an only slightly smaller five-seat C-segment SUV model. Or to put it another way, uh, that might be easy to understand, something like, for instance, Nissan X-Trail will cost you a significant amount more to run than a Nissan Qashqai. Say it says it's done its best to buck that trend here. Uh, this Taraco, like its Tiguan Allspace and Skoda Kodiak design, 
fine stable mates, benefits from exemplary engine efficiency, and a relatively trim curb weight that, uh, well, just to take two examples, sees it tip the scales around 70 kilos lighter than an equivalent Land Rover Discovery Sport and around 90 kilos lighter than a rival Hyundai Santa Fe. Let's get to the figures. Uh, the front-driven manual gearbox, 2.0-litre TDI, 150 PS diesel variant we're trying here, manages a WLTP rated return of up to 47.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. For a version of SAT's mid-sized five-seat Attica model with the same engine and drive configuration, the figures are 50.4 mpg and 124 grams per kilometre, so not too much of a difference there. More pertinent, though, is how these figures match up to those of competing D-segment seven-seat models with similar base diesel power plants. Now, interestingly, nearly all of them pretty much match this Seat's fuel showing, but cars in this class like Nissan's X-Trail, Hyundai Santa Fe, uh, Kia's Sorento, and Land Rover's Discovery Sport are considerably dirtier in terms of emissions, so they'll cost you more to tax. Uh, Taraco 2-litre TDI, 150 PS, front-driven model like this one, falls into the 33% benefiting kind tax band. Uh, we should, though, insert the caveat here that mating the 4-drive and DSG automatic package with this 2-litre 150 PS diesel has a considerable impact on those figures, dropping them to just 39.8 mpg and 146 grams per kilometre, and that'll put your BIK tax band up to 37%. For the 190 PS Taraco diesel model with 4-drive and DSG, the figures are up to 38.2 mpg and 147 grams per kilometre. For the sake of completion, let's give you the returns for the two petrol models. Uh, the front-driven manual gearbox 1.5-litre TSI Evo base variant manages up to 37.2 mpg and 152 grams per kilometre. Uh, that equates to a 34% BIK tax band. While the fully loaded 2-litre TSI petrol version with 4 drive and DSG manages up to 31 miles per gallon and 166 grams per kilometre. If you want to do better than that, you'll have to talk to your dealer about the plug-in hybrid engine that say it's developed for this car. Here, a 1.4-litre TSI petrol engine is combined with an electric motor to deliver 218 PS and the potential for well over 30 miles of all-electric motoring. And that's after charging that can be completed in just three and a half hours from a 3.6-watt power point. Will all these quoted figures be really achievable in real-world motoring? Well, in the wake of the Volkswagen Group's Dieselgate fiasco, that's a fair question to ask. Uh, the answer depends on how many of the driver-orientated efficiency tools you're prepared to use on a regular basis. Now, it'll obviously help if you run your Taraco most of the time in the drive profile driving modes eco setting, which softens off the throttle response, and on the DSG Auto models, gets the gearbox to change up early to to optimize economy. Uh, this mode also saves fuel by only sending energy to the air conditioning and to the power steering when it's actually needed. Uh, you can monitor the air conditioning system energy usage via a selectable convenience consumers readout, and that's selectable both in the instrument binnacle and on the central screen. You also get an eco trainer system included as part of the center dash infotainment screen package. Now here your driving is rated for things like braking, throttle use and anticipation and points are awarded. The results of your efforts are then visualized on a graphical eco points overview screen. Uh, there's also a graphical fuel consumption screen showing the success or otherwise of your recent efforts towards frugality. And you can also ask the eco trainer for efficiency tips, although personally we wouldn't because most of them are, to be frank, rather blindingly obvious. Uh, things like smooth journey, efficient consumption, and anticipate gear changes to consume less. Whichever power plant you choose, as you'd expect in this day and age, all models get a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, uh, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. And the DSG automatic transmission is equipped with a coasting function, uh, which at cruising speeds will uh, disconnect the gearbox, leaving the engine to idle until you next need it. 
Like most modern diesels, the TDI units on offer get a selective catalytic reduction filter to cut down on nitrous oxide, and they've been designed around the use of a urea-based solution called AdBlue. Now, this is injected into the exhaust gas stream to help clean up emissions. Uh, the liquid used is stored in a 12-litre tank that's mounted at the rear beneath the boot. This will need topping up as part of regular servicing, and you can monitor its status via a dashboard display. Uh, talking of servicing, the recommended intervals for all engines are based around a 20,000 mile two-year regime. If you cover fewer than 10,000 miles a year and you make a lot of short journeys though, uh, you will be encouraged to book an annual checkup. And you can budget ahead for maintenance costs by taking out a fixed price prepaid servicing plan at point of purchase and that will cover the first two scheduled garage visits. It costs around £350 up front or around £20 a month. Another financial burden that you'll want to plan around is insurance. Although the Taraco helps here by sitting in lower groups than some of its uh, direct rivals. The cheapest variant to get cover for is a 1.5 litre TSI petrol model that comes with a uh, Group 23 or 24E ranking, while the 200 PS TSI petrol variants come in at Group 29E or 30E. As for the 2 litre TDI diesel Taracos that most buyers will want, uh, this 150 PS variant is rated at either Group 24 or 25E, depending on the version you choose. Uh, the 2 litre TDI 190 PS derivative comes in at Group 29E or 30E. And we should mention warranties. Uh, like Volkswagen and Skoda, Seat only offers a three year, 60,000 mile package here, which doesn't sound much in an SUV era where Toyota, Hyundai, and even Jeep offer five year warranties. Kia, of course, has an even longer seven year package. And uh, you can extend the Seat package at extra cost. A four year, 75,000 mile warranty on a Taraco costs around 500 pounds more, while a five year, 90,000 mile package will set you back around 850 pounds extra but you shouldn't really have to at least both extended warranties are fully transferable to the next owner though now finally we should mention residual values which is an area where sat usually performs quite well with its suvs uh, the taraco is not going to upset that form with industry experts predicting that a typical 1.5 litre tsi evo excellence version of this car will still be worth £12,350 after three years and 60,000 miles of use. And that's a very class competitive figure. Currently, the Taraco holds its value slightly better than an equivalent Skoda Kodiak, which might make it slightly cheaper to own on a typical PCP finance deal. Some cars set out to be different this isn't one of them. It couldn't be really, so closely has it been based on its Skoda and Volkswagen Group cousins. Seat has instead been content to add just a dash of extra Iberian flavour to an achingly competent existing recipe. So the Taraco looks a bit sportier, thanks in part to a lower ride height, which means it drives slightly more engagingly too. Yes, it is a late comer to the segment, but the Spanish brand has tried to use that tardiness to its advantage, namely in enabling it to include the kind of really sophisticated digital instrument cluster that wasn't really thought of when most rival models were being designed. Uh, we've also given this car full marks for infotainment provision and interior storage, plus there are nice standard touches that you'll appreciate, like three-zone climate control. True, it could all have been rather more excitingly packaged, and like its rivals, this supposed seven-seat SUV is actually a five-seater with a couple of extra third-row fold-out child seats. Uh, that lower ride height isn't going to help it much off-road either. And in terms of interior space, well, this Taraco loses out slightly to its Skoda Kodiak checkmate. Still, you might well feel comfortable with all that, and if you do, there's plenty to like here for larger families wanting a well-equipped, practical seven-seat mid-sized SUV with a slightly sportier demeanor. It doesn't really offer anything very different to what's already on the market, but it's an engaging alternative that in many ways is difficult to fault. Will that be enough to establish Seat in this segment? It'll be interesting to see.